All right. And I want to thank all of you for coming to our open house for the County Road B2 and Lexington intersection. Uh, we're glad that you were able to attend and discuss the upcoming construction of this project. Uh, my name is Alan Maxwell, and I'm a project manager with Ramsey County Public Works. I'm here with Luke Lordy from Ramsey County and DJ Sosa and Matt Greenslip from WSB Engineering, uh, who has served as our design consultant on this project, and Jesse Freyhammer with the City of Roseville. Uh, we'll be giving a project overview. We're reviewing our final design and walking through our project's construction schedule for this summer. Uh, there will be time at the end of the presentation to ask any follow-up questions. So for those of you that are new to Zoom, you can ask questions by selecting the chat box icon as shown on this slide. Uh, while we discuss the project, the microphones will be turned off and we would ask that if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. Uh, we'll answer any questions asked in the chat box following our presentation. And afterwards, we will open up the microphones one at a time for any additional questions that you may have. So for a quick refresher, uh, the project's located north of Highway 36 at the intersection of County Road B2 in Lexington. Uh, the improvements will take place over a quarter of a mile long section of County Road B2 on either side of Lexington Avenue. Uh, throughout our design, the county has worked closely with the city of Roseville, with Roseville Area High School, and has gathered feedback from you, the community. Uh, the improvements will include updating the pavement, updating the trail and sidewalk, new crossing ramps at the intersection, installing a new traffic signal, updating the retaining walls at the intersection, and some underground utility work. Uh, and now I'll pass things off to DJ to discuss our project schedule and the results of our pro uh, public engagement efforts. Thanks, Alan. Uh, next slide, please. There we go. Uh, so we started the project back in 2020, uh, in January 2020, and did the preliminary design work, uh, and then got that completed the summer of 2020. And then with that, uh, working on, we did work on the final design until summer of 21. And then finally got it to bid this year, uh, February of 22. And then with the intent of having construction to start this summer. Um, uh, again, the intent is to complete the project in one construction season. Um, and then after the school of, uh, school this year ends, and then before it starts in the fall, but before that, even before the state fair uh, begins in the fall, we want to make sure construction is done at that point. Next slide. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, open houses. Uh, this is uh, the first one was pre-COVID. We actually had an in-person open house uh, February of 2020. Uh, we identified the issues of the intersection with the public and discussed the concerns the uh, residents had with the intersection. Uh, three topics that came up were the pedestrian crossings, especially that being near the school, uh, traffic impacts along B2, um, and then discussed the overall timeline of the project. Um, with the restrictions uh, due to COVID, uh, we opted to do in a video presentation February of last year and had actually Alan uh, do a presentation and that's actually posted in the website and presented the, the preferred layout. And uh, we're here today for Open House 3 uh, virtually. Um, and really the intent is to discuss uh, plans for summer construction. Next slide. Uh, this is just a representative of uh, the online engagement we've done. And I don't know if it's still open or not, but. Uh, it was an interactive map. Um, when that was open, we received 35 comments. Um, and outside of this website, uh, the county did receive five calls and uh, a few emails in regards to the project and accommodated the uh, uh, those uh, questions and concerns. And then uh, two letters and postcards were sent out to the county. Next slide. I think this is you, Alan, so I'll hand it back to you. Hey, thanks, DJ. Um, 
So with construction coming this summer, we wanted to give you a few key dates to keep in mind as things get underway. Uh, our contractor will be in the area towards the end of March this month uh, to do tree trimming and clearing branches along the project limits. Uh, this work is easier to complete in the winter when the growth on the trees is down. So that's why they'll be coming out this month. Um, once they finish their work there, then they will get off site and then they won't come back until later in the summer. Uh, there will be another project going on in the area. Um, XL Energy is planning a gas main replacement project along County Road B2 from Lexington Avenue to Victoria Street. And this is a separate project from our county construction and is a continuation of the gas main replacement project that was in the area last year. So last year, they performed work on the west side of Lexington Avenue. And this year, they plan to do as much of their work possible on the east side of Lexington Avenue uh, in the spring and early summer. So Excel is planning to do as much of their work as possible by boring pipe underground, uh, meaning that they're going to be tearing up the roadway as little as possible and limiting the roadway disturbance. So when our construction project starts, uh, work on the improvements east of Lexington Avenue is set to begin on June 13th uh, with work on the west side of Lexington Avenue set to begin no sooner than June 27th. Uh, differentiation there is just to give um, some more time for school to let out uh, and get the contractor in earlier uh, to fit with our deadline on the east side. So like DJ mentioned, our goal is going to be to avoid any impacts to the Roseville's Rosefest parade route and to get the project done in August before the Minnesota State Fair so that it doesn't interrupt the uh, traffic route along Lexington Avenue down to the fair. Uh, during construction, uh, construction activities shall not be started between before 7 a.m. Uh, nor continued after 9 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Um, one exception to this is going to be the installation of the storm sewer elements within the intersection itself. We have storm pipe that you can see on the um, presentation here running underneath the roadway. And at some point that is going to need to be closed so that we can go and update that infrastructure. Um, the contractor will notify the residents well in advance of the time of this closure. And during that time, a detour is going to be set up along Hamlin Avenue, uh, County Road C2, Highway 36, and Victoria Street, so that the general traffic will avoid the area. However, even during this detour time, the contractor is going to be responsible for providing local residents with access to their homes. And also to note, during the pouring of our new concrete curb and gutter, and our concrete driveway aprons along some of the ho houses along the project. Um, the contractor has a variety of methods to make sure that uh, people will be able to access their homes during that time as well, as well as staying off of the concrete. Uh, construction is anticipated to be completed before the end of August, before the end of August, prior to the new school year and the Minnesota State Fair. And so you are aware there is another county project that's going to be taking place during this summer. Uh, Ramsey County has identified Lexington Avenue in its yearly mill and overlay project. And uh, this is going to be a project that is much less uh, severe um, while the contractor is out performing milling and paving on that project, it will continue to be open to traffic. And so uh, there won't be any additional detours resulting from that, uh, just in case you see work being done outside of the intersection itself. Um, that might be our separate project. So we will be updating our project website during this time with more information. So be sure to be checking that for um, 
a first glance of place where you can get more info on the project. And I think with that, we should be good to um, look through the chat and see if we have any questions. Do we have anything that's come up so far? In the chat here. Anything to note, Michaela? Nothing in the chat uh, as of right now. All right, and I'll confess I'm much more used to Teams than Zoom. So if there's a raise hand function somewhere in here, Michaela, um, for people, if you have direct questions that you wanna ask us, um, just be sure to let us know and we can unmute you and go one at a time. So there is a raise hand function. Um, I'm not seeing any raised hands either. All right, well, WSB has done an excellent job laying out the project and getting us figures such as the one shown on this slide. So. We can admire the pink hue of the replacement while we wait. All right, I think we see something in here. Other than the closure associated with the storm sewer work, will there be any other closures? Now, I believe that the detour is going to be set in place for the closure of the intersection itself, and that we are going to be working with um, uh, stop signs, message boards, potentially having a police officer come and direct traffic in order to um, utilize the intersection as much as is feasible during construction. There's another question. What is the date of the storm sewer detour? So that's something that's harder to pin down at this moment because the contractor can have his best laid plans right now, only to find that we get rain three days in a row during the summer, and then that has to get pushed back. Um, that's why once we get closer to that date, he's going to reach out to residents along the project limits and we'll be updating our website to note when that will take place but to be sure in advance of the detour happening uh, we'll get our sign set up earlier and keep the community in the loop of when that will take place great so we have another question will there be sidewalks on the north side of v2 east of lexington Oh, I'm trying to zoom in the layout and it's not working. Do you want to take that one, DJ? I don't believe so as part of this project. Uh, is the question specifically on Lexington? Um... Aaron, I can unmute you and you can specify your question a little bit more if you would like oh. to. I did find it in the chat, sidewalks on the north side of the east side of Lexington. Yes, east of Lexington, there is sidewalk today and there will be sidewalk in the future. Um, on the west side of Lexington, um, no, I don't believe so. Okay. And sorry, you, if you were unmuted, you can continue to clarify if need be. Okay, yes, I was just wondering because um... You always have some people that are coming east of Lexington to go to school, and um, I know it's a hazardous place sometimes to for them to cross. So, uh, just wondering if they would have access to to walking towards to and from school after they cross Lexington. <laughs> I guess is my question. Yes. Yeah, so we are going to be updating the traffic signal system with more up to date. Uh, pedestrian friendly crossing equipment and there will be the northwest quadrant of the intersection will have sidewalk at the intersection to facilitate a um, crossing from east to west and then a crossing from south to north so they can get down on that large 10-foot um, bituminous trail 
on the school side. This is Jesse with Roseville. Just to further clarify, there's no new sidewalk being done with this project. All sidewalk and pathways that are there currently will be upgraded if, if they're impacted by it, but there's no new additional sidewalk. Um, in the future, the city does plan to put new sidewalk on the east side of Lexington, south of B2, uh, but there are no plans to go north of B2 currently. Looks like we have another question. Will emergency vehicles be able to get through other than storm sewer closings? So certainly during construction, the contractor is gonna make every effort to get the local residents uh, to their homes. So there's still going to be a route at the end of each day that can be traveled. Um, whether or not that's a gravel surface or a milled bituminous surface. And so certainly, yes, if an emergency vehicle is coming through the area, every effort is gonna be made to get them through that area as quick as possible. But during the storm sewer closing, they're gonna be following the, they should be following the detours. Thanks. We have another question. What access will we have at the southeast corner of Lexington, especially at the 1092 B2 driveway? Yes, I see that question is from Sherry Williams. Uh, hello, good to talk to you again. I uh, remember we've had uh, phone conversations and yes, so depending on um, the contractor is going to make sure that residents can get into their homes and so I know we've talked about this in the past and uh, there's just a variety of ways that he could do that based on what the each driveway looks like. Uh, for example, if some driveways are wider than others, it could be possible that during the um, that during the pouring of concrete that they pour half of a driveway and maintain access on one side and then flip it afterwards or a potential to ramp up over the curb in one way or another. It's gonna be something that is a case by case basis that um, uh, the contractor and our Ramsey County staff that will be on site inspecting will make sure to work out with residents case by case. So there is in the chat, uh, will this work impact traffic during the 4th of July activities taking place further up Lexington at Central Park? Do you anticipate that there would be gravel at the intersection of B2 and Lexington? I'm not familiar with where how far up North Central Park is. Maybe Jesse, did you wanna field that one? Yeah, so um, for the parade, we have specific requirements in the contract. So the parade um, will not get impacted. Um, I can't remember what date the 4th falls on this year. Um, so the parade or the 4th of July is in Central Park, which is just north of B2 here. Um, obviously the contractor won't be working that day. So um, the, the intersection will be at least partially opened or, or in some state that because uh, there'll be no activity going on. So it should be relatively usable. Um, it may have some more delays than typical, um, but um, I don't think it'll be fully closed. So there'll be some access at least. I know in our contract, it specifies that work on the west side can't begin until, um, July, until June 27th. And if I open my calendar here and flip through to that, that is a Monday. And then um, the fourth of Ju the fourth of July is also on a Monday, a week later. And so, what I could foresee happening is them starting on the um, on the western portion of there, over by um, closer to the uh, football field, and making their way east, um, so that before the end of the week we can leave the intersection B, um, and then begin the intersection in earnest on the 5th. 
Um, that's just that's just a guess, but that's certainly something that as we hold our pre-construction meeting with the contractor and work through the finer details, we can make clear. And then there was the question whether or not there's going to be gravel at the B2 and Lexington intersection. That is typically how they might build it up using the underlying road material that's there. Um, if they have the bituminous off of it, that, that they're required not to leave leave holes overnight, um, that there has to be a route that's accessible once work ends each day. And so that would be a fair guess to assume that they would build that back up with um, the rock that's there. Any other questions? So we have, once the project begins, are residents expected to get out of their driveways by 7 a.m.? No. Um, residents can come and, come and go as they need, and it's the contractor's responsibility to make a way for you to do that. Um, they can't they can't require you to get up early and vacate the premises no um other the other way around they are not able to disturb you before 7 a.m per our contract Okay, let's do a last call for questions. Okay, here we go. Are any detours scheduled for east of Lexington? Outside of the the detour for the intersection itself during the storm closing, uh, no. no. All right, anybody of the project team have anything else they'd like to say or any last questions from any of the attendees? Yeah, I can come on board and say um, that it's been it's been great working with this project and reaching out to some of you and appreciate your input. Um, I, I am the design project manager and as we move into construction here uh, Luke Lordy who uh, may not have been able to attend today uh, will be taking over the project as our construction project manager uh, who's been with Ramsey County for 10 years and knows knows his stuff pretty well um, my contact information is on a website currently and Luke's is going to be added there as well if you get questions to me um, I'll certainly get them back to back to Luke, but it's going to be his smiling face you see on the on site and and not mine. So, just wanted to thank everyone for their part in the process so far. It looks like we have another question. What is the plan for the sidewalk on the south side of B two? All right. Well, since um, since we're reconstructing the intersection now. 
Uh, now is the time to make things ready for any sidewalk improvements that might happen in the future south of um, south of B2. Um, but currently, the county does not have any plans to um, put that in. So this is Jesse with Roseville. So the the existing pathway on the south side of B2, that's just going to be reconstructed just because the the lanes are moving. Um, sidewalk south of Lexington on south of B2 on the east side of Lexington, the city in 2023 is planning to, to make the connection from B2 down to Trunk Highway 36. So um, though that is a, a future project. So if you're one of the residents on the east side of Lexington, the city will be reaching out either later this summer or early next spring. Yeah, thank you, Jesse. And then um, just, just just some further comments on additional construction. So um, as the county mentioned, there, there's, a, there's other county projects going on this year. So certainly recommend uh, checking out the county's website. Um, also check out the city's website. We have also some projects in the area um, as well as Excel Energy has a very large gas project. Um, some of you uh, south and west um, or yeah, south and west may be impacted. They are replacing the gas on uh, County Road B between Lexington and Hamlin, and they're going. Then they're going up Hamlin from uh, County Road B up to County Road C. So we are certainly aware of all the impacts, and we'll make sure people can get around. But it will be a challenging summer. Um, so just just keep your eye out. Sign up for alerts on the website. Uh, check the city's website. Uh, we'll try to keep everyone up to date as best as possible on. Uh, the best way to navigate throughout the city. And, and certainly we are planning around Rose Fest. We're very aware of that, the 4th of July. So we'll try to make it as um, minimally impacted as, as possible. But, but, but there are some pretty big projects this year. All right, unless there are any other questions, I'll turn it back over to Alan as the county rep to wrap this up. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, just wanna thank everybody for joining us here. Um, we're glad that um, we were able to inform you on what's going on and certainly continue to check our, our website for updates as Jesse mentioned. Um, hope that you all have a good night and stay safe. Thank you.